Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, Episode 40. I'm your host, Dr. Darina Shine, and today is September the 7th, 2023. It's a good energy around uh, the universe as we speak right now. It's very silent, and I wanted to take the time to talk about how to move in silence when we're looking at our business moves, what our next plans are, what the goals are. When you have a business developer, the relationship between that business developer and yourself are so vital that it helps you kind of narrow down what you want to see pursued in your manifestation and your dream for your business, your business vision. And so today we're going to talk about that. I think it is very vital I thank the members that are here today. Thank you so much for being here today. We have 18 people in the podcast. It's wonderful. So how is everyone doing out there today? How are you feeling? As an entrepreneur, the goal of making sure that we are provided what we need. How are you doing today as an entrepreneur? Super awesome. Super awesome. You know, you guys. Okay. Yeah, moving in silence is very important because you can take a dream and your dream can become someone else's vision especially if they see it faster, farther than what your pocketbook at this time can allow to pursue, your investment strategies can create. So when you start to speak your dream into existence, into manifestation, be careful of those around you and pay attention to what they're doing when you're speaking about your concept. Moving in silence. There are over 2.4 million people building impressive entrepreneur work in America since 2018. 2.4 million people have influenced paying attention to the entrepreneur, especially the female entrepreneur. So why do we need to move in silence and what does that mean to us? So as you put that into the proctor, we're going to move in a way that makes it viable for everyone, suitable for everyone. Because everyone has a different move based on their age, based on their experience, based on how they are maneuvering their own life within the area of business. Remember, entrepreneurs, we have always stated here at Chronicles of a Nonprofit that you bring the morality into the business. You don't just become a business owner and then morality comes in. So when we talk about moving in silence, the goal is to not give away your pearls to swine, to make sure that you are safe for your future because others can intimidate that future for you. So developing timelines, brainwashing or brainstorming, well, washing the brain to storm through how we're going to launch certain areas of our of our project. You know, these are important ways that we can become best friends with our business consultant. And that's what I want you to understand. It's a relationship of how you're going to write, how you're going to edit, how you're going to schedule, how you're going to promote whatever it is you're trying to do in order to get it off the ground. And then celebrating with the right people at the end, 
when you finally get it launched. It's called ribbon cutting. Many of you have already gone through that, entrepreneurs, but many of us have not gone through that. So the first thing we want to do, as always, we talk about it, is the transparency of figuring out what we're doing while we're growing in the field of the hustle. We're making sure that we are coming off as truly honest as we can. Moving in silence is not easy because you want to give the accolade to yourself, the pat on your back, the let me show you how far I've been going. To the, you want to give yourself, entrepreneurs, that opportunity to say, guess what? I put all my blood, sweat, and tears into this and now... <laughs> I have no one to tell it to. Sometimes we have to be even mindful of the people who are in relationships with us, husbands, wives, significant others, baby fathers, baby mamas, because they see that there is something happening. There's another another way of handling the situation. And so as we flourish, you know, through this magical essence of what we call entrepreneurship. People are going to think we're going to grow away from them anyway. So it's very vital that silence, we have to know what to tell who, when. And that's what I want to share with you. Um, As an advocate for whoever, you know, if you're in the advocacy perspective of your business. Your advocates, who you're going to protect, who you're going to service is one of the most important clients that you could ever come across. Because as an advocate, you're giving of yourself. You're saying to yourself, this is what I have to do because there's a need for this particular action. And so what happens when we are advocates, there's a lot of things we can't share with others because of the credentialing rights that comes with that, the responsibilities that comes with that. Moving in silence at that point is going to be very important. Also, when we realize that we have become passionate for what it is that we desire for ourselves, no matter what age, no matter if it's something that is popular right now or not even popping. If you have a passion or a zeal for something, this should be your focus. You set goals for that focus and you go forward no matter how outdated the idea may be. If it is something positive for a community, then go for it. Only you can do what you are going to do. Only you have that niche to reach those client base, that certain group of people. Only you are going to be able to tell your story the way that you're going to tell it based upon your unique experience. And by not doing that, you rob the world of something special. Yeah, I see it. I see it, Kimberly. I see exactly what you're saying. You're We're robbing the world of the ability to move into greater areas because they see if she can do it, I can do it. Anxiety holds a lot of people back. It interferes with the way that we do things. And sometimes we have to heal ourselves before going into the passionate work in which we desire to go into. Healing ourselves during a time where it matters the most to a community is what's going to make or break the destiny of the goal in which we are going to pursue. So moving in silence is something that you do with your higher power. You go in 
while you're healing yourself, making your mistakes, honoring the self-confidence, leaving the ego into a area where it is not controlling you, but you are controlling it. Looking at the part that only you can carry. It's the character, the discipline. That's what's going to make the individual come to life when we're talking about moving into business. It's not about being secretive and trying to hold everything back, but holding things back for a specific time to launch. There's a time and a place for everything. And ethics speaks for itself. Sometimes it's not the right time to move, entrepreneurs, and we understand that. Sometimes it's not the right time to move. You just, you feel it in your spirit. You feel it in your heart. But if you don't move fast enough and you've told the wrong people about what the destiny of your future is going to be, they will go carbon copy it, get their clicks of individuals who may have the sponsorship funding that thinks it's a great idea, jump on it, let's go. That's why I always hold the quote in my mind. When a time's energy has come, it's time to move upon that energy immediately, or you will see that energy manifest in another form somewhere else and say, I thought about that. Why didn't I do it? And that's what we mean, Joshua. When we say that the power behind putting our efforts into place, putting our thoughts in alignment, and being secretive and moving in silence, just so we won't have to worry about the backstabbing people, about the people who are going to try to manipulate and throw us off course. Perfect example. I would stay up all night when the kids were asleep and I would do my business development plan. My plan for skills to success, I would do in the middle of the night when others could not impress upon my private space and my time for me to do what I needed done. Because during the day, everything else is chaotic. I'm either working with the client, working with the children, doing the day-to-day functions of, you know, just being a parent, being a mother, being, being a, a, you know, student. Because <laughs> at that time, I was a student as well. All of these things were there. So moving in silence, in silence, was the best thing for me. And it opened me up, but it still didn't open me up to entrepreneurship as much as I needed to have been open during that time because so many other things took precedence. So many other things distracted me for years. Fear distracted me. The mistakes distracted me. The powers that were surrounding me that said, no, you, you're not going to do this. I'm going to put some stumbling block in your way. Distracted me. I didn't have the self-confidence at that point in my life to say, this is a trap. This is a setup. This is a something that's going to stagnate me. Because I was so busy trying to sell my brand that young that young in the game, when I was just putting together the portfolio, the introduction, the mission, the purpose, the vision, the financial success, the overview. These were things that I was just in the process of putting together. And guess what? What happened? Years later, I get there because of the distractions because I wasn't moving in silence. And when you, when you choose to move in silence, if you have a scheduled plan set, and this is what else 
I'll use as an example. Have, you know, plan set, scheduled out what my schedule would be for the day. I will be in my office. I'm not taking any phone calls from four to six. And I would dedicate that etched out time from four to six. As soon as I spoke into existence that four to six, I will be unavailable. The majority of people flooded me with phone calls. I may have been waiting on someone specifically to call me. And I had been waiting on the phone call. I was excited for the phone call. And that person actually called. And here's a knock at the door directly at 445. This is your urgent call that's been waiting, that you've been waiting on. What do we do, entrepreneurs, at that time? Do we continue to do what we have etched in our schedule? Or do we stop what we're doing to accommodate that situation? Because they know that we're in the process of moving something to fruition. Something you got to think about. Finding that work rhythm and building your foundation, making that foundation strong, standing standing firm, standing tall, standing true, starting over when we have to, making sure that we fill the cracks so people won't have a reason to find a weakness in our structure, forgetting about keeping up the facade, Focus on what we need to focus on. And that focus must be done in silence because otherwise other things will interfere in the way. I have been used to doing video footage that I'm doing a perfect video and something happens. The computer shuts down, the the telephone rings, the alarm goes off. You know, something, neighbors coming in the door, whatever. I've learned to not put it on the schedule, not plan it out, do it sporadically. And videos come out so much better that way. Someone was even talking about how to start a YouTube channel. It's very simple. I will be going through that process um, screenshotting it and uh, taking you step by step through creating your YouTube channel so that you can become your own entrepreneur channel. You can do what I do. You can, um, you know, practice and play with it to make sure that you possibly have what it takes to fill the niche of your genre, the thing that you're speaking of, whatever your entrepreneur Um, financial or whatever your goal is, the setting of, you know, business development, if you want to be a painter, if you want to be an architect, if you want to, whatever you want to do in your business, that you have what it takes to do that, just get on and start talking. Yeah, you're going to stumble over some words like I just did, but who cares? <laughs> you know, I've been doing this for so long. It doesn't matter about the mistakes. What matter is, is 95.5% of the information accurate that I speak because everyone's going to have those mistakes that they make. So if you're interested in learning how to do a YouTube video or a Facebook business page or something like that, that's a good topic. Email me and I will help you to do just that. And I'm going to put our email and our telephone number in the, yeah, I'm going to put that here for you. So then that way you will definitely be able to see how to get in touch with us and scales to success LLC at gmail.com is our email address. So you can feel free to email me there. And I will try my best to get to you as fast as I can. But yeah, share with me 
what it is that you need. What do you need researched for your business, for your niche, your niche? Because that is what it, I'm here to do as a business consultant. I'm here to support you in that manner as well. Um, the research, some of the things that I do want you to pay attention to is the new way that people are planning these scams for business and business development online. So be very mindful of those who tell you about generating what is called scam codes. Um, and the code is that when you click a code and click a link for your actual Gmail or PayPal or Cash App or YouTube channel or Facebook or anything connected to a Google app, they can take that, scan it. You give them permission thinking that you're preventing a scam to only be scammed. So please be mindful of that scam notification. You know, now if you initiate it and it's something that you want to do specifically um, to verify that a person is not a scammer, then yeah, you can send the link and ask them to, you know, click it and apply it to them so you know who they are specifically. But sometimes that is a um, just a recipe for disaster because now you have information that, you know, if you don't delete or keep safe, now it's third party and it can be fraudulent, even on your end. So we never know who we're linking to us. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to the podcast Chronicles of a Nonprofit. We really appreciate everyone for all that they do here, the advice that you bring, the energy that you connect these podcasts to, because the conversation in and of itself, it grows and is surrounded by the relationship and the communication through emails and phone numbers um, and phone calls that I receive. So don't think that a phone call is too old school it's not. Pick up the phone and give me a call. <laughs> Leave a voicemail and someone will return your call or email me. Again, I appreciate everyone for being here. Keep listening to Chronicles of a Nonprofit. And this is episode 40. I am Darina Shine, and I thank you so much for being here. September 7th, 2023. You have a blessed day and we'll see you next time.